It's the official ride of the two incomes, no kids, no apologies crowd. What's euphemistically called a personal luxury car. That's code for a rolling status symbol. It's the 2011 Mercedes CL550 4Matic. Let's check the tech. This is not an entirely new CL, but a heavily revised one to be sure. Debuted around July 2010. Saucier lines, a more exotic motor, LED front lighting, yet keeping the classic values like an eye-watering base price and a gas guzzler tax. You don't buy one of these for any rational reason, but you'll sure look good being illogical. So what is a CL? It's really the spiritual successor to the original Mercedes pimp ride, the 560 SEC. This is where you know you're looking at a car that is primarily about style and not about function. This beautiful, semi-elliptical, pillarless opening right here is real tasty. The rear seat legroom, not real generous. I mean, that passenger seat's all the way back right now. You're not putting any legs behind it. And when you hop into the CL550, even despite the major redesign it got for 2011, you're going to be quite familiar with what you're seeing. This is some classic sort of high-end Mercedes stuff. The upper half of their line looks just like this. You've got the uh, sort of oddball ultra wood wheel. You've got the virtual speedometer right there, which turns into the night view assist. It's now got a plus name attached to it because it looks out 500 feet with infrared to find things based on heat signature, not just visual signature, and it'll also call out pedestrians and animals. This controller on the left is kind of handy. It lets you go through a variety of menus. There's a ribbon there at the bottom. And because our car is loaded, we've got everything. You can show nav prompts here, a short circuit version of what's on the big screen, your audio information, your phone state. Here's some settings for things like distance display, your safety systems, well, the attention assist tells you if you're drowsy, you see the coffee cup right there, it'll blink if it thinks you should pull over. And then we have the blind spot assist and the lane keep assist. Blind spot looks out of the rear bumper with some radar sensors, I believe, to see what's in your blind spot and lights up that little pylon in the mirror when there is someone there. Lane keep assist is looking at the lane, looking at the lines ahead. This works 20 miles an hour and above. And if you're drifting, you get a stick shake. You get this vibration here in the wheel and I believe as a rolling upgrade, they'll be offering the ability for the car to yaw brake you back into line. So if I'm drifting out left, it'll brake just the right rear wheel a little, and that'll yaw the car back in. I don't believe it's enabled on this vehicle as of this production date. Navigation system is uh, where you mostly see how that dot pitch gets a little bit crunchy. Here's where I start to see jaggies along the lines of the streets. It's a really good system with some 3D building rendering, good bird's eye, live traffic, good POI overlay. It's a good system, hard drive based of course. It's a Harman Kardon Logic 7 system, 5.1 surround, 600 watts, 11 speakers around the cabin. That's your system, but it sounds really good. You're not going to need anything else, which is good because there's nowhere to put it. This is a highly customized center stack. I mean, you could also add a USB pigtail or others because that connector over there is where you can change out the pigtail you've got. Now Mercedes is currently using this kind of goofy stock on their luxury cars. This is the one that goes up for reverse. You can hear my park distance sensors. You can see my colored indicator there on the dash showing me what's near and around the perimeter and you can see out the back what's going on with a relatively standard, relatively basic rear view camera. It doesn't turn to show me trajectory. It's got some basic markings for where my distances are and it doesn't have zoom which is a gimmick anyway but really good visual quality. Okay the naming story on this car is a little funny. It's a CL550 but that is not a five and a half liter V8 as Mercedes would have done for eons. Now it's a new technology 4.6 liter V8. Reduce the capacity for efficiency use twin turbos to bump up the power. We get 429 horsepower to this guy, 516 foot-pounds of torque. That's a great number. When the torque's that much above the horsepower, you know you're dealing with turbos and probably a V8 as well. Zero to 60 is 4.8 seconds on this big boy, which weighs over 4,600 pounds before you even get in it. MPG is a little bit 1522, poor enough to earn it a gas guzzler tax of 1300 bucks. CL is more like rolling than driving. This is a big ponderous car. Despite all of its power and its 
prowess on the road, it just has the genes of rolling as opposed to driving. It's not a cut and thrust, heel and toe kind of experience, despite that twin turbo V8, which has amazing terminal velocity and an unrelenting sort of thrust to it. But it doesn't come on with any precision. Uh, it's, in fact, when you're in the E mode, the efficiency mode, this button right here, it's almost scary. This car is so numb in on and off throttle driving, you can't even negotiate city traffic with anything that I'd call precision. Move it into sport mode and things get a lot more uh, sharp, a lot more urgent, but it's still, there's something real laggy in the, uh, in the turbo circuit. And you've also got a lot of computer stuff going on. You can tell the drivetrain's thinking, the transmission and the engine are figuring out what to do. It's just sort of numb, but in a way that is extremely competent. Does that make any sense? As part of a package with blind spot and lane drift tech, you also get parking assistance. These tend to be real flaky in the car biz. Let's see how this one works. Okay, it spotted a slot big enough for me. This little parking indicator turns blue. So I put this guy into reverse, then I hit OK. Now it gives me that graphic that says do what's on the green lines. First it says back up straight until you come to the limit of that green line. Got it. Now it shows me make a turn, line up the red, which is my steering trajectory, over the yellow, which is where I need to go. And I follow that back to the limit line. And then it beeps again and says, now turn your wheels the other way to match that arc, which is a little weird because my steering wheel blocks the image. This should all happen on the central LCD. And now follow it in for the final back and fill. Let's see how well it does. Just kind of creep it along here. Okay. That worked out real nicely. Okay, let's price this guy. First of all, it starts well above 100, 115 or so. So. If you're watching this video to go shopping and you just fainted, click out and go look at some iPhone or something. 115.3, that includes the shipping and the gas guzzler tax of 1300 bucks. But in this classification, you don't worry about money like that. Option-wise, 3500 bucks will get you a package that includes that night view camera, complicated massage seats with automatic contouring bolsters, depending on the G-forces, and the rear view cam. $3,000, which is actually quite a value, gets all the driver assistance stuff. The lane departure tech, the blind spot tech, it's also going to give you that pre-safe braking, the adaptive cruise control, so all the stuff that helps you drive, also that parking space spotter technology. And if you add a can of STP, that valve lifter noise will go away. What's up, Brian Tong here, and if you want the scoop for all the good and bad inside the Apple world, then the only thing you should be watching is CNET's Apple Byte. I'll give you the latest news, rumors, tips, apps of the week, and even call out the bad apples. So watch it all at CNET.com slash Applebyte, and I'll see you there.